Well, Clive, we started here in the original building, the Yamaha building now. We've had a look at the Suzuki building, we've had a look at the Kawasaki building, we've been in the Honda building, been in the race shops. Obviously, you know, motorcycling and racing is a massive, massive part of your life. And clearly it was a massive part of your, your father's life. And clearly it's going to be a massive part of your, you know, of your children's lives. You know, the, the enthusiasm they seem to share already, you know, is that you, you've obviously rubbed off on them. Um, you know, you, you've worked with some absolute superstar racers in your time. Um, any one of those riders that you've, you've had riding for you stand out? I mean, obviously you've gone from everyone to sort of Carl Fogarty right the way through to... You know, Davey, who's just won you another championship this year. Yeah. I think the way that we operate as a team, we love them all. Mm. And I really do mean that. Mm. You know, I think, uh, I just mentioned there, we're still getting Christmas cards and things from guys that rode for us 20 odd years ago. Quite something. And it, I did look at something the other day that someone sent through, a man that bought a bike from my dad in the 60s, apparently a TD1C. And he sent a picture of uh, my dad uh, Mike Halewood, my uncle Don, and myself on the grid as a 17-year-old with Mike Halewood at the uh, Isle of Man. And I'm thinking, hang on a minute, that's how long we've been training. I, I, I was doing a bit of racing myself at the time then, but that's how long we've been training for this, you know. The, the, the nerves have been stood on that grid. The, um, the looking down Bray Hill, the looking up to Paddock at Brands Hatch, you know, Turn 1 at Cadwell. It, it, it's... Um, it's really special. Back in 2020, um, we did one round. We did the final round of the BSB at Brands Hatch. And that was probably a little bit selfish because I was born in the January and I went to my first meeting in the March with my dad and my uncle. And um, to, to have not done a race meeting in 220 due to COVID, that would have meant I'd gone a year without racing. Mm -hmm. And I, I couldn't it just didn't feel right. We had to do a race meet. Come on, Connor, we've got to do the final round. Why? Well, I haven't been to a racetrack this year. We've got to do it. And um, I don't know if that tells you something, but we, we've had some terrific uh, riders over the years, but both as people, as uh, motorcycle racers, and, and not all of them have been, you know, the Connor Cummins, John McGuinness, David Todd, Bruce Anstey and Hutchinson, uh, Steve Plater, uh, Mike Elwood, Phil Reed, of course. It's an incredible level. But occasionally, you know, you simply help someone because you like the fact that they're into the motorbikes, they want to go racing, they haven't got the wherewithal, they haven't got the knowledge. Um, you know, somebody that I'm really happy to be involved with is Ben and Tom Birchall. And, world champions, many time TT winners, um, because I love sidecars and it's nice to pass on some knowledge and help those guys. And uh, when we helped Claffy back in 2.10, when Ian won all five, you know, Claffy won both races. Uh, I'm very passionate about sidecars and we've not mentioned that here today, yeah. but uh, it would be, I could not single one rider out. It would be so unfair on the rest of them mm. because I would love to have a pint with anyone that's raced for us over the last 70 years. Well, I can tell you, I spoke to a few of them, and I can't find I can't find a single person that's got a bad word to say about you. Well, However, you. I do have a little test for you. Oh, here we go. <clears throat> One of your riders that I spoke to yesterday um, told me to ask you, who's the rider that weighed his own back protector? That was Hutcher. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> yep. Um, what other questions did we get? I'll tell you what I want to know. Um, and that was 12 years ago, and I still remember that. Yeah. So there you go. He said... He'll, you'll, he'll know that it's me, but I bet he still remembers. I will tell you, sorry to interrupt, he took his body armour out and weighed it. The body armour weighed 700 grams, I can remember that 12 years on. Um, so sorry, and if I'm interrupting there, but 700 grams the body armour, and he left it out. Unbelievable. Yeah, sorry. I've got a funny tale from another one of your riders who started off on an RS125 apparently, or, or spent some time on an RS125. He went to his local bike shop to try and get a piston kit for said RS125 and they quoted him a price, um, £76. And did Grandad Brook come across for it? No. No. But he, they couldn't supply it, right? And he made the trip across to Paget's because he knew you'd have it anyway. Come to the counter, you were at the counter, said I need a piston kit for an RS125 and you said, yep. I'll have one of them. It's uh, 106 pounds or whatever it was, 104 pounds. 
And he looked at you and he says, well, it was, uh, it was 76 pounds at my local dealer. And you said, did your local dealer have it in stock? <laughs> and he said, no. And he went, my price when I don't have it in stock is 76 pounds. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, was it wet? Yeah. Yeah. That's why I said, did Grandad Brook come for it? Ah, right. I didn't know Grandad Brook was. I thought you meant... Sorry. Grandad um, Brook is Tom's Tom, Grandad. Yeah, that, that's why i Totally I'm, wrong. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah no. Um, yeah, it was wet, and uh, but hello to Grandad Brook anyway. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, bless him. And Tom, um, John McGuinness, can't yeah. speak highly of you enough. I had a little chat with him last night, and uh, we actually spoke about it earlier on with the 600 exhaust. He said yeah. you found a company that had an exhaust that had another two horsepower or something, so you flew to Japan especially for him just to go and get uh, get said exhaust and bring it back. Um, said yeah, that, yeah, you, you're just. Well, he couldn't Sorry. speak highly we, enough we, of you. We, we saw, ja you're absolutely right. We saw Japanese, I didn't actually fly to Japan in fairness, but we saw Japanese exhaust, uh, Japanese 600 had come from Japan and I happened to go to the diner at the same time it was on. Wow, that's pretty good power. Oh yeah, yeah we found this exhaust, it's very good. Okay, which, where do you get that from please? Da, 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 da. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, mush, mush. Uh, yeah, but, but, and you're absolutely right, I didn't go there for it, but within two days, I had it on the island and John finished second in the uh, 600 race with that exhaust on. Yeah. It tells me one of the most special things about you was that um, you had a parts failure on one of the bikes at the, one of the big bike races at the TT that was or something. Leading the, that was leading the super bike in yeah. 208 on the Saturday. And he said that you were almost inconsolable. I cried. Yeah, he, I said, cried. he said that you cried and he said he, he had like obviously he, he'd lost the race but you lost the race as a team and he said and to see to see somebody so passionate about the race and so upset over a over a component failure he said just sums the man up said you're a very very special man um, um did he tell you the rest of it he told me to ask you how the um dent happened on the fuel tank of the tz 750 well i'll tell you that one in a second but after that failure of the cam sensor and crank sensor in the superbike race when we're leading on the saturday back in 08 I discovered that HRC had made some factory parts that were on their factory bikes. On the World Superbike. On the World Superbike yeah, in America. Yeah. So I got onto America. How am I going to get these? Well, first of all, I said to Honda, please, you've got to take them off the bike after the race. Clive Sun, yeah, yeah. So um, Blandy was in the paddock, Stuart Bland was in the paddock. Stuart went to the tent, I'd arranged it, went to the garage, got the bits off the um, uh, factory bike, got them back to the UK. And then we had to get them from the UK to the island, of course. And uh, Chris Fairbanks, uh, Fairburn, who's sponsoring Billy at the minute, Billy McConnell, um, flew them over to the Isle of Man for us. And very fortunately, we won the senior TT with them on. And didn't Guy and Martin break down with the, the older problem. ones? Yeah, had the, the, absolutely yeah. right. Yeah. Guy had led, and he had the parts on that failed us in the first race. Yeah, we'd gone up through all this. Uh, what's the word many flights many thousands of miles to get the revised parts and um, the uh, they won the senior so absolutely an incredible uh, success story and what better rider could you do it with yeah to wrap up I could literally sit here and chat to you all day it's been an absolute pleasure to come and spend some time with you thank you so much for not only just showing me, but showing our viewers around um, some of the some of the little gems you've got hidden away here. Um, yeah, if there's any way we can come back another day to, to spend some more time, I'm all in. It's been an absolute pleasure, Clive. Incredible, Shane. So much. Thank, Thank you, you for coming. Thank you.